Hello everyone, my name is Brian Riley. I am the founder of Mississippi Paranormal Society and we are based out of the historic town of Vicksburg, Mississippi. Welcome to my podcast, The MPS Case Files, and this is the very first episode. It's also my first time doing a podcast of any sort, so please bear with me. Just to tell you a little bit about me, like most people that are paranormal investigators, or like some people like to call us ghost hunters, I had some personal experiences that I couldn't explain, so I got into research. And years later, that led me into paranormal investigating. Now, over the years, we've done many cases. Uh, we do private residences, we do businesses, we do historic locations. And there's two questions that I'm always asked. One is, what do we do from beginning to end of an investigation? And it's real simple, but it's a process. First, we do the client and witness interviews. Then we'll do research on the location. Then we'll go into the investigation and everything that that entails, which would have a lot of subcategories. Then we'll go into the reviewing of everything that we did during the investigation, going over photos, going over video, um, audio, witness and client interview notes, and comparing them to any encounters that an investigator might have had, you know, one of their personal experiences. And then we'll sit down, we'll tell the client everything that we found and what we think is going on, and we're very honest, uh, no BS involved in that. Sometimes we tell people what they want to hear. Um, sometimes we tell them what they don't want to hear, but it's always the truth, you know? That's just how it is. We're not going to sit there and sugarcoat it, and we're not going to lie to somebody. If we think a place is haunted, we're going to tell you. If we think it's not haunted, we're going to tell you. And if a place is haunted, you know, we will tell them what we think a resolution should be to move a spirit on or for them to live peacefully side by side with the spirit, which surprisingly some people don't mind doing. The other thing that I get asked a lot is what is the biggest thing that I get out of it? And one is to help people. The other is I like to validate the claims. It's all about validating to me. And there's a case I was thinking back, you know, what could be the first podcast um, location that I could do? And this place has always been one of my favorites. And that is in Natchez, Mississippi, about an hour and 15 minutes from Vicksburg, and it's called the Beekman Place Livery, and this was MPS Case File 318. Right whenever I learned about Beekman, we had just finished up investigating the two properties that the Natchez Garden Club owns and runs, and those are Magnolia Hall and House on Ellicott Hill. And one of our contacts with the Natchez Garden Club was a very sweet lady named Rose. And she told me about Beekman, and she got me in touch with the owner, who was running it as a long-term stay, bed, and breakfast. And he told me a lot of the claims of paranormal incidences that he had, and some of the history. Now, history goes like this. It was built around 1839, and it was used as a fire station. A few years later, it became the carriage house for the Aaron Beekman family. Uh, he had a wife and several children. And one of his children was seven-year-old Rosalie. And the Union Army's gunboat, USS Essex, 
on September 2nd, 1862, ran their guns on Natchez from the Mississippi River. And everybody's just running all over the place, going nuts, trying to take cover. Unfortunately, a shell fragment hit Rosalie, and she ended up passing the next day. She was the only war casualty during the running of the guns, as they called it, on Natchez, which eventually led to their surrender of the town. Not much is known as to what the property was used for after the Beekman family, but it is known that around the 1980s, it was turned into a private residence for the O'Malley family. The husband was a scientist. He had a lab right there across the street. And he was also at times an alderman in Natchez. And he's credited for being one of the men that brought Under the Hill Saloon back to life down on Silver Street and Under the Hill Natchez. And from everything that I read, he was very much a people person. And just about everybody liked him. And unfortunately, in 2005, around the age of 77, um, he had been very sick and he passed away. He ended up taking his own life. And then the current owner stepped in several years ago and ended up buying the property and turning it into a long-term stay bed and breakfast. And whenever I was talking to the current owner, uh, we were talking about his, you know, the things that went on. And one of them was that one night, he was sitting in his bedroom on the second floor and he was doing some work on the computer and he was the only one in the house during this time he didn't have any guests there he's just up there doing some work on his computer just hanging out and in the reflection of the monitor of his computer screen he saw a man standing behind him, right inside the doorway to the bedroom. And of course, he turned around and looked. Nobody there. Another time, I think it was a week or so later, and he's sitting there again, and he saw the same man. And he just sat there looking at him in the reflection, and he noticed he had Clothes from around the 1840s, early 1840s. And he thought, okay, maybe this is somebody with the Beekman family or either right before, right whenever it was still being used as a fire station. And he also told me about the claims of they would see these shadows moving around the house. They would hear footsteps, doors opening and closing. You know, different kind of things. Run-of-the-mill haunting kind of stuff. So we set up a time. I think it was late February, early March of 2012, whenever we got in there and did our investigation. It was me, Josh, our former member Danny, and Miss Rose from the Natchez Garden Club. She was also the house manager for Beekman. Now, we love Miss Rose to death. She was a hoot to be around. Um, she always wanted a snack. You know, Brian, you got any chips or anything? No, she loved to eat. And another thing that she loved was orbs. She would not go do a session with us for anything at all. No EVP session. She's not going into the house where it's completely dark. She would rather sit in front of the DVR monitor and watch everything there and every time an orb or it could be a piece of dust would go by on camera she got oh look at that orb 
you know, she was just funny. And Danny could actually do a really good impression of him, of uh, Miss Rose. But we went in, we set up the DVR system, four cameras throughout the house. And Miss Rose and I, we sat at the DVR monitor first. And Danny and Josh went upstairs, and they're conducting their investigation. They go into the room where the owner has his experience with the computer and monitor, and they tried debugging that, and they couldn't. And so they're sitting there, and the DVR camera is sitting right between them. They're sitting beside each other, and it's shooting right between them. And I rarely ever will say okay this is an orb I've got to show to the client but this one in particular it flew over the camera came into frame and disappeared and right at that time a question was being asked by Josh and he, he's a volunteer firefighter and so he could relate to that being a fire department, a firehouse. And he asked, are there any firemen here? And in a Class A EVP, we didn't have to enhance it or anything. He got a response. He is. Now, to me, that's a direct answer. It's not a yes. It's not a no. You know, it's clear as day. He is. And we're wondering if he was referring to another spirit. Now, at one point, I left the DVR station, and I went to the parlor to investigate by myself. Um... The only thing that happened in there was I heard two knocks. I had asked for them and I received them. Then whenever I was going back to the DVR station along the way, I looked up the stairs and I could hear footsteps. And I was like, okay, maybe that's just Josh or Danny moving around upstairs or something. I'm going to go back to the DVR. And... About that time, Miss Rose said, you know, there were some orbs going right up the staircase a few seconds ago. And I'm sitting there thinking, okay. I was like, well, did Josh or Danny move? Did they get up and walk around or anything? She said, no, they've been sitting the whole time. And I was like, okay. Well, I radioed for them. You know, y'all need to move to another room. Y'all been in there for like 40 minutes. So they got up and they went down the hall to the other end of the home. And this room has two uh, single twin-size beds. And one of the first things they noticed was the one of the claims matched um, what was going on in that room. One of the bed comforters was messed up. So they straightened it up. And they do a session in there. And they come downstairs. And I can't remember if it was Danny or Josh, but they forgot something. And I was like, I'll go up there. And I hadn't even, at this point, heard anything about the comforter. And I get up there, and I notice one of the beds is messed up. So I radio down. I was like, did one of y'all sit on the bed? And they responded, no, there was a couple of chairs in there. So we sat in them. We had to straighten one of the bed comforters up whenever we first went in there. And I was like, huh, okay. So we ended up putting a camera in that room. I think we took the one out of the hallway and aimed it in that room. And of course, as usual, nothing ever happened in that room again. Until I went in there a little while later, I think I was with Josh, and I asked, you know, is there something 
you know, if there is someone here, you know, let us know by talking into the audio recorder. And I asked, you know, is the gentleman who committed suicide in his lab present with us? And we got a yes. Again, Class A EVP, very clear. I was like, well, do you need something? You know, my next question was, if you're here, do you need something? Uh, do you want to move on to a final resting place where you can have eternal peace? And we got a yes. So we said some prayers and everything, and we, you know, asked if, you know, move them on, let them cross over. And that was it. The only other thing that we had happened was a couple of photos of a shadow mass that was moving in a room. Two photos taken, one second apart, and you could tell that it moved. And this was a, you know, DSL camera, I guess you can call it, kind of big. So the lens, you know, zoomed out, so it's really hard to put your finger in front of the lens to create a shadow. I mean, you could do it, but it takes some effort, and it'd be very hard to hold the camera steady to take a picture like that. Now, we tried it. We tried debunking it. You know, could it be a finger? Could it be a camera strap? No, none of that worked. So we revealed everything to the owner uh, about a week later. And he was thrilled about everything. He thought it was very cool. Now, a few months ago, here's where the real validation comes in. A few months ago, his grandson contacted me. He had seen where I had done a, a blog on... Mississippi's Most Haunted Bed and Breakfast, and Beekman was number seven. And he validated that it was his grandfather that committed suicide. His grandmother stayed there a few years later, and he thinks that, you know, she might have had some experiences in, in there, and that prompted her to move out. Um... He told me about him being an alderman and, you know, stuff like that. And he said, did you ever have anything happen in the bedroom right by the external hair, uh, staircase where it comes up? I was like, actually, yes, we did. And I told him about the bed comforter being messed up a couple of times. He said, that's the room he slept in. He said, my grandparents slept in different rooms because his grandfather would work in his lab at all hours and he'd come home, go straight up the staircase on the outside, go in that room and go to sleep. So that was his bedroom. So to me, that's like the ultimate validation. I think next time I go to Natchez, I'll visit Beekman and try to line up a return investigation. Um, I'd love to get in there again. I have team members that have been in Beekman, and I like to get them in there. It's just a interesting place. I like to find out if Mr. O'Malley has moved on. I I hope he is. I hope he's with his wife, someone that he truly loved. Thank you for tuning into my first podcast of the MPS Case Files. Episode 2 will be out next week. You can find Mississippi Paranormal Society on Facebook by that name and on Instagram and Twitter at MS Para Society or under my name, Brian Riley. Subscribe to this page so you can get notifications whenever. We upload another podcast, and we will talk to you soon.